Hey everybody, getting closer to the end. Tonight we are going to talk about astronomy tools. So let's get right into these bad boys. So we are first going to talk about, I'm going to move myself because of course I'm blocking a very lovely picture again. But remember when we talked about the electromagnetic spectrum and the distance between these two crests is called a wavelength. And then when you move down the, or move through the electromagnetic spectrum, the wavelength is going to decrease, which means the frequency increases, which means the energy increases. So remember, you have the radio, which are the really long wavelengths in microwaves, and infrared, and the visible light, the only section we can actually see, ultraviolet, x-ray, and then gamma rays. And these guys have the most energy, and they can start to penetrate our skin, our bones, and then internal organs. <clears throat> so, telescopes. Maybe I'll hang out here. There we go. The telescope. So what happens, how a telescope actually works, you have two different types of telescopes. Um, well, optical telescopes. So we have optical telescopes, and then we have other telescopes, which we're going to be talking about as well. But as light from the stars moves through space, it's going to be spreading out. Okay, So it's like a flashlight, kind of like how, you know, at the flashlight, it's kind of condensed and it spreads out farther along the wall. So that's kind of what it does with stars as well. So what telescopes are, our telescopes are going to be like this lovely little picture over here, and it's going to collect that light and focus it in on one specific point so that we can actually see an image. So this is an optical telescope, and it's an optical because we're going to use our eyes. We're going to do the visible light looking at that. And those are going to use what we call lenses, kind of like an eyeglass lens, or mirrors to collect and focus that light. So non-optical telescopes are going to collect um, and focus different types of electromagnetic radiation, which we will get into a little bit later. But looking at optical telescopes, you have two different types. You have um, a refracting telescope, and then the other one is a reflecting one. So we're going to talk about a refracting one. So what this does is it's going to use a convex lens. So you can see that it has two lenses. It has an eyepiece lens, which is going to be down here. This is where you would look through. And then it has what we call an objective lens, which is going to be um, this one. Okay, So it has two lenses. And you can see how it's going to focus that light onto the eyepiece lens so that you can actually see it. So the convex lens, it's, um, it gets thicker in the middle. So it kind of goes out. So it starts off like thin, and it gets thicker in the middle, then it's thin again. So the simple refracting telescope is going to have two convex lenses, one with your eyepiece and one with your objective lens. And then in between, it's got that long tube. So what happens is light enters here through the objective lens, and that lens allows scientists to see far away. So the bigger this lens is, the farther they can see into space, and the more expensive the telescope is. The eyepiece is going to be your smaller lens. And that's going to magnify the image so it's easier to see. So that's what that stop does. So like I said, the bigger the lens up here, the farther in the space they can see. So that's the refracting telescope. Because it's, um, refraction, remember, means bending the light. So we're bending the light and focusing it on uh, a smaller area. And then that eyepiece magnifies it. Reflecting telescope, reflection, remember, is most commonly seen with a mirror. So it's, off, it's kind of like a no-duh statement that reflecting telescopes use mirrors. So this one, rather than having the um, all the only convex lenses, this one will have a mirror in it as well. And this one's a little bit different because typically you look down and through the bottom of the eyepiece. Here the eyepiece is on top, so you're looking down into it this way. And then it has mirrors in it as well. It still does have that lens. This is still going to be a um, lens like in the refracting telescope. But we have mirrors. Instead, there's a mirror here, and here's a mirror here. So that is going to actually focus even more light into a smaller area. So again, the larger the mirror, the farther you can see. And um, this, the really big optical telescope, so the biggest ones that scientists use for the uh, visible light ones are going to be reflecting telescopes. So we get a bigger mirror, we can see farther into space. Other telescopes? You can have something um, called an observatory. There's a very popular one out in LA, if you've ever been out there. But observatories are kind of like large 
telescope protection type thing. But basically what they are, these are where really large telescopes are housed. Um, it can contain just one telescope. You can kind of see down here this one's open. So these will open up. This roof will track, and they're able to push the telescope out. But the telescope will take this whole up this whole building. They're huge telescopes, so they can see really far in the space. And a lot of observatories, like the one at LA, are located at the tops of mountains, so that they um, don't have any like any um, I don't want to say distractions, but like things that get in their way to see in the space. So it's more clear than when you're at sea level because you get away from the city lights and all the other things that could be a distraction from that telescope. So that's called an observatory. We also have something called radio telescopes. So remember, radios are going to be the super long wavelengths. And the scientists actually use radio telescopes to try to detect if there's life out in space as well. So this is huge. Um, just to reference this, this, here's a car. So if you look where my arrow is, here's a car, and then this is the telescope. So it's nothing tiny. And they are typically built in mountain valleys because you have to have a lot of space. And they have to be so big because radio waves have long wavelengths. So like I said, this one is an example. This is placed in a valley, and it's huge, so it can intercept that long wavelength. So it has this like smooth reflecting surface, kind of like the mirror does in the reflecting telescope. But that will, in turn, instead of the visible light, we're just dealing with radio wavelengths for that one. Then we also have, let me move myself so I'm not showing the picture. But we ha have something called an um, X-ray observatory. So this one here is also infrared. So the Spitzer Space Telescope, that's going to produce images in the infrared portion of the spectrum. So that's just after visible light. So those wavelengths are a little bit shorter than visible light. And then the X-ray, I'm sorry, yeah, that's right. And then the X-ray um, observatory. That's going to observe images in the X-ray portion of the electromagnetic spectrum. So X-rays, this is going to be out in space because you can see here X-rays are blocked by the Earth's atmosphere. So these telescopes, they have to be out in space for them to observe them. So X-rays, remember, are just before gamma rays in the electromagnetic spectrum. Then we have something called space probes. So this is going to be a spacecraft that is not manned by humans. So it's simply sent out into space to collect information, but no humans are on it. So Sputnik 1, it, there was a big space race between us and the former Soviet Union. But Sputnik 1 was the first space probe launched into space by the former Soviet Union back in October of 1957. And then we launched, we meaning the United States, launched Explorer 1 in January of 1958. And both of those probes were just sent into space to study Earth. Voyager 1 is a very famous space probe as well because it was launched in 1977, and it is the farthest um, traveling space probe. It has been um, past Saturn and Jupiter and is heading towards the edge of our solar system. So it's way out there, sending back data. And then finally, we have something called a spectroscope. A spectroscope is going to produce kind of like somebody, um, when you take fingerprints, this is what a spectroscope is going to do, it's kind of like taking the fingerprints of stars. So a spectroscope is going to collect light, and then each element will produce a different, you can see down here, each element is going to produce a different um, picture. So what happens is, is that the light is going to um, come through a spectroscope, and then it's going to produce these spectral, spectral lines. So if the star, and then scientists can tell what star it is, because it's going to look at its composition. So this star particularly has more helium, not as much hydrogen, things like that. So it's like taking a fingerprint. So when they point this at a star and they collect that information, that light in there, and they produce those spectral lines, they can say, hey, we know this is the star Polaris because we've identified it before, and this is the element makeup. So it's kind of like um, fingerprints, like I said. And that's all we got. Not too much fun going on. Well, I mean, I think it's fun, but. You may not. Um, my ear itch. Sorry. Um, 
Got one more week left, guys. Hang in there. Bye.